Today you're gonna see a lined vest that has a lot of dots for shaping. It only has two pattern pieces and a lot of options for you to be creative. Woven fabrics. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have a vest to share with you. It is a brand new pattern from Itch to Stitch and it's called Shao Vest. This is an Asian inspired design. It can also be worn by everyone and it just depends on the styling and the type of fabric you use, how it's gonna look. And I just love a layering piece you can put over a dress, a blouse, a t-shirt, you know, a turtleneck, whatever, or just wear on its own. I think what's cool about this one is that there's only two pattern pieces. So all the business about assembling your pattern takes no time at all. <laughs> there's only a front and a back. The back is on the fold. And what gives it all the shaping are all the darts. So you have armhole darts here, two darts on the front on each side. So basically four on the front and also four on the back. Ten little darts to give you all the shaping that you need. You can make the vest lined or unlined. And there's two ways that you can line it. One is super simple. It's just putting the two layers wrong sides together basting them all the way around and finishing all the edges with bias tape. That's one way, that's the simpler way I would say. And then the second way is to bag it out and in between the main layer and the lining add some type of piping or trim. And Asian inspired would be with a little bit of a trim of fur. Now I don't have any notions that I can sandwich between my layers here. I don't have any piping or any of that. I also do not want to make any piping. That is something I just never want to do I don't can't find the cording it's just yeah I'm just not interested and I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon so I always knew I was going to do the easier option which was put the main and the lining together and bind the edges of course you can make this aligned if you wanted a really really simple way and then you would just bind the edges with no lining layer in between the closure crosses over it's a little asymmetric there's a bit of a raised neckline here so the shoulder seam isn't straight it, it's straight and then has a curve going up your neck a little bit I think it's really unique and the center fronts are curved now to close it you can use a lot of things like toggles and leather things with wood there's a there's a few buttonhole marks there on the pattern but you can be totally creative and do whatever you want I didn't have any special notion to close this either so I ended up finding these humongous hook and eyes that I'd bought quite a while back and they were perfect, just perfect. I just sewed those on. I didn't really need to do any buttonholes so I think it was a really good match. <laughs> Whenever Itch to Stitch releases a new pattern there is a discount on the first week, the release week. So the shower vest is 20% off through Wednesday the 7th of December so it's a good time to get it for a little bit less. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below and always in a sec you'll see how to put yours together if you want to give it a go. You need a medium weight woven to sew this and then the options are so so vast. I have a list here on the graphic, you know, anywhere from brocade, jacquard, linen, a wool type material, chambray, denim, velvet, you know, you can use a lot of fabrics. And then for the inside, what you would typically use for lining, you could use a really lightweight rayon, a lightweight cotton, some silk maybe if you wanted, <laughs> if you wanted it to be extra warm, maybe some flannel or some flannel backed satin would look really nice inside. So something like that, something lighter. And then to bind the edges, you could use ready-made bias tape if you wanted. I think one inch works best, but it's up to you. I decided to make my own. I've never found store-bought bias tape that looks nice. It's gonna look elegant and refined. I just have never found any, so I just prefer to make my own. As usual, I had a hard time choosing my fabrics. I just have so many options and it's just really hard for me to go and choose really quickly so I did give it some thought and I ended up on this green linen rayon blend 55% linen 45% rayon and I ended up lining with just a black poly satin I wish I'd had a matching color with the lining fabric but I didn't so I just went really really traditional and just put black in there because both layers are together and the only thing separating your lining from being seen is the bias tape you know if you go like this or the wind moves I think you would see the lining layer very easily that's why I didn't want to use a print or anything flashy because I don't want that to clash with whatever I'm wearing 
So when you have a big facing underneath, you know, with the main fabric, then it's different because then you don't see the flashy lining inside. That's when I go and have a lot of fun with my lining, but not in this case, I just kept it really simple. The sizing is really good from 00 to 40 US. It goes up to a 62 inch hip and it is a woven style. So each to stitch always has bust cup sizes from A through double D to give you a really, really good fit. The ease, it is a semi-fitted design, so it's not really loose, you know, it's quite nicely shaped. It'll fit one light layer underneath. And at the bust, you have about four inches of positive ease. At the waist, only around one and a half. And then at the hips, about three. I think the space here is enough. I would probably wear this on its own or with just a really light, light layer underneath. So I'm fine with having that amount of ease there. And the length, it'll hit your mid hip sort of thing. It's not, it's not gonna cover your bottom or reach the full hip. About fitting, I did some quick flat pattern measurements. I drew the seam allowance here. To discount where I wanted to measure from right here, measured down, saw where the fullness of those dots were going to be if they were actually at the waist right here, front and back, and I thought everything was so spot on for me, like this up, upper part of the drafting for my size is spot on. So in my head I thought I don't need to do any fitting adjustments, but I still made a really quick and dirty muslin non-wearable with just ugly fabric just to make sure that the darts were really correctly placed for my waist because if they're higher or lower it could just end up affecting the fit so I really wanted to see it's hard for me not to make a muslin when I'm going to use linen just because it's fabric it's a little pricier I suggest you make one it won't take that long you can just sew everything with a long stitch length you don't need to line it and you know it's just to see the fit so I don't regret making the muslin and I made sure everything was fine I also wanted to make sure that the armhole that was really correct that it was closing up the armhole and that it had the right depth and length so not time wasted in up close and so personal i do have some sewing to share with you you'll see the pattern pieces the general construction and how easy it is i took my time with the hand basting with the binding i think that took the longest but it's not a super hugely complex project that's really hard to do at least the way I've done it which is a simpler way which is just putting the two layers together and binding the edges if you wanted to use the other one where you sandwich something in between and bag it out that is a longer process where you do that in stages and then you end up with this really clean fully lined and bagged out jacket it's a whole different technique but because I wasn't going to be sandwiching anything in between I just chose the simple version to share with you today There are only two pattern pieces here, the front, two layers of course, the back cut on the fold. There are two dots here on the front, two dots on the back, you can see them marked. There's also an armhole dot in the design. I've chosen to line mine and the way I'm going to finish all the edges is with bias tape. Because I had enough yardage of this linen, I just made a lot of bias tape. I think I have about five yards there, maybe I'll have some left over. But that's going to finish the neckline and the armholes and the hem, everything. So I'll just show you the lining pieces. So it's only two pattern pieces and if you want to make yours lined, you just cut them out of lining fabric. Same thing, the back is on the fold, two layers for the front. I have the same dots marked everywhere and I'm just using a poly satin lining that's black. I just want it to be discreet. I don't really want any flashy thing inside because there's no facings here. So, you know, if I walk and wear the vest open, if anything's going to show inside, it'll be black. I wish I would have had the matching green to match the green linen, but I just don't. So here I have my main and my lining the way you put them together is going to be exactly the same there are lots of dots to be sewn then shoulder seams and side seams and then we just place everything wrong sides together and baste it all around the edges and bind it's going to be pretty easy but it's a lot of dots <laughs> i don't mind i've taken my time and pinned all the dots there are 10 dots on my main layer and then i'll have the same on the lining layer they're all pretty straight nothing complex here <laughs> I'm gonna sew them all the same. I'm not gonna back tack. I'm just gonna leave some threads at the top of the dart and then at the bottom. And that's how I'm gonna sew all these darts. After that, I'm just gonna knot these by hand on the other side just to make it all neat. I've just sewn one of the armhole darts and if you move the seam allowance to the top or the bottom, you realize that it's been trued so that the seam allowance goes up. 
if you want to press it down you can see all this excess so that's not how it's supposed to be it's supposed to go like that my dad is a little deep that's because i'm sewing a c cup it'll be smaller if it's an a or a b and i'm just going to trim some bulk away this is going to be inside it's fully lined so i'm just going to leave myself about half an inch seam allowance there and I'm gonna get rid of this and I'll do the same thing for the lining. Here you can see some of the waist that's sewn. I'm still not done with all the dads. I'm working on my main layer first and I've done all the dads, they're all ready to go. So I've united the front with the back, right sides together and I've pinned the shoulder seams. They do have a little angle, a little shape, they're not completely straight. And then I've pinned the side seams. So I'm gonna get those sewn. So there aren't many main seams, but they are sewn with half an inch. So I've sewn one of these shoulder seams. You can see there's a little shape. It's gonna be raised a little. And there is a mark there and we need to do a little snip here so we can press the seam allowance open and can release the tension right there. When you wear the vest, it's gonna have a bit of a raised neckline here. If you don't snip into that and just try to press it open, it's gonna pull and it's not gonna lie correctly. I've got the vest sewn, all the seams are done, all the darts are sewn and pressed towards the center, both on the back and the front. You can see them there, there's four at the back. So I've just extended this on the table with the wrong sides facing up and I've done the exact same steps with my lining layer. It's all the same, there's nothing different. And this one's right sides up and I'm gonna just put it on top so that we have wrong sides together here. And I'm just gonna make sure to align everything, give it a quick hand base, rounded edge of the center front, across the neckline, at the armhole so this can just act as one piece here i have the two layers together i took my time to base them there here is all the binding <laughs> so i'm gonna start somewhere around the back and start going around do the neckline first that includes the hem and then the armholes i started pinning the binding on the back sort of around the center back so that's where i started i have them cut on the diagonal here because this is actually the grain line right here so i went all the way around and now i'm coming back to meet this place and I wanna sew this together on the diagonal too. So I'm just gonna overlap this piece, extend it all, get rid of that fold. I'm just gonna put a pin here and now I'm gonna look. This is where I have the diagonal section starting on the bottom and I want this one to be half an inch longer from this edge right here. So I'm gonna look there and then pull out a thread right there. So this is how I'm gonna make sure it's gonna be on the grain because I'm gonna pull out a thread. When the light shines through it, you can really see where I pulled out the thread and now this is my guide to cut a perfectly straight cut right here that's exactly on the grain this is how they're going to meet but i have this one longer to create that overlap for the seam allowance and then pin these right sides together and it's going to look like this now you need to let these little tails overhang because these need to meet at the quarter inch seam allowance that i'm going to use there and the same as there so i'm going to sew that together give it a press and then i'm going to have my binding go all the way around Because I'm working with linen and it's really easy to finger press, that's what I'm going to do here instead of getting up and plugging on my iron. So I'll just press the seam open like this, get rid of these little extra bits here. And now I can just finish pinning on the binding. I'm going to sew the binding on the reverse. That means I'm sewing it onto the wrong side of my vest. So right side of binding to wrong side and i'm going to be sewing right into that crease this is a bias tape maker i use it's got a 25 that means that the finished width after the two folds are done is going to be an inch so that's the finished width that comes out of here when you make it it's super easy i cut these two inches by a long 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 length all on the bias and then i just put it through here and that's how i make myself bias tape Here I have the curve that's at the bottom of the center front so I'm just going to be careful to sew like that and not get anything move out of the way. So here's the binding sewn from the inside. You can see the curve there is super neat. Now from the right side of the jacket I'm just going to bring the binding over the raw edge to cover the seam I've just done and now I'm just going to hand baste this all the way around so that it's nice and neat and then I can top stitch and I can see what I'm doing and I'm much happier doing it like this. The back has already been sewn.
Here you can see is the arm holder. If you use a print, you won't see it. I do have a solid, so you can see it. And then there are the two waist studs on the front, both sides. And at the back, it's cut on the fold, and it also has the dots here, the dots there. And you just make two garments, basically the main and the lining. They are exactly the same. Everything <laughs> inside. I just have my poly satin lining right there. The binding is super neat. As you saw, you know, I did take my time with it and baste it. The exact same way was done here on the armholes. The join here is sewn on the diagonal on the grain line. And that's really nice. I feel that I did my best with it and I'm really proud of how it turned out. And for the closures, I have these humongous hooks and eyes. Look at this, this is the hook. So I tried on my vest. I had a good play to see where the overlap was gonna fit nicely on my body. Figured everything out, put pins, just made sure everything was perfect, perfect. <laughs> then I just wiggled myself out as much as best as I could, which is possible. And then having the vest overlapped and everything correctly placed, then I went ahead and chose where these were gonna be. I just put four, they are four inches apart, there, like this and then I sewed on the other side where they were supposed to be. So you can see there's a little overlap inside. It took a little while to get it perfect, but then the actual sewing of the hooks and eyes was by hand super, super easy. <laughs> on the inside, it's just another layer. It's super neat. I think it's gonna be a really cool garment for me. You know, I'm a huge vest wearer. It's one of my most worn type of layering pieces. I just grab one when I leave because I always like having something on top that's sleeveless. So. Lovely, I wish I'd had time to make more. Let's see this one, simple styling with my Mountain View jeans I made a few days ago with a zipper hack at the hem. Black stretch jeans, they'll always go with everything and they go perfect with this as well. Here is my shawl vest. There are only two pattern pieces. The way you get all your shaping is with a lot of dots around the waist and at the armhole. I didn't make any changes to the pattern. I sewed a size 16 with a C cup. The way I did my closures was with large hooks and eyes. My fabric is a linen rayon blend in a military type green. It is lined and all the edges are bound with self bias tape. It'll be a really cool layering piece for me. There's a little bit of a raised neckline here. You can see the back. There are other ways that you can sew this and many more options to be creative. I can wear it closed like this on its own. But in this case, I do have a cami underneath and I think I'll be wearing this open. I usually wear things open. I love vests. I convert jackets into vests all the time. I don't need to do that here because it is a vest. <laughs> and I really like the color. I kept mine simple. It is still lined though and I really, really enjoyed it. I've paired it here with my Mountain View jeans that I made the other day. I have a little zipper hack on the hem, split hem. Don't forget that the shell vest is 20% off through Wednesday the 7th of December. Find my affiliate link down below. And that's all from me. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.